I'm really passionate about the girls and women issue in that I found out that in my country, there is that and there's that the, the women or the girls are being disadvantaged but the main reason for them being disadvantaged is that they're not disadvantaged by the law but they're disadvantaged by the society let me break it down you know the difference between legalizing something and something becoming socially acceptable we're coming from in Botswana we're coming from a patriarchal society in that the society was ruled by men and men were making the rules and everything and at times we find out that that hindered the girl child's progress men were seen as providers and women had to stay behind has to stay at home and um uh, i've realized that i've come to realize that in that women were not allowed to reach their full potential because we have dreams, we have aspirations, we can make a change. They were only good enough to be staying back at home, to be having kids, to be doing everything that has to do with the marital affairs and only confined to the family status. But when a woman goes maybe up whatever the, the ceiling that was set, that has been set in the society, it becomes a problem. It becomes a discrepancy between the woman, her family, or the society in general. And also I say that that is very common in villages and rural areas. People are not really acquainted with the law in the villages. They don't really understand what the law is. They don't really understand. They don't see it from an open view because whatever they know is how they were raised and they wanted to continue with other people. So I say that because I feel that women are disadvantaged, because I feel that women um, are not seen to be making, are not seen to be people who can make a difference, who can do whatever they want to do, to do it, they can leave a legacy behind and everything that, like that. Uh, I feel that women end up not becoming better. They end up becoming bitter in the process because they are being um, refrained to do what lies in their heart, you know. The fire that is within them is being quenched by the societal stereotypes that you are a woman, you, you can do ABC, you can take the leadership role, you can do that. Even though in the country you are allowed to take the leadership role, but how about the people that you, are, you live with from your home village or from your, your family? Are they really going to accept you? Are they really going to be in a position to say, well done, you did well, what so i was saying that in that regard a lot of women end up getting discouraged because from time to time as women as human beings not only women we need um approval we need someone to say that you did well and if you don't have that person that you run to you don't have that I would call it a safety net. You don't have a safety net, especially in your society. Or even when you're doing a good job and you get discouraged along the way, there's no one to pick up that. And the attention brings giving up your aspiration so that you can fit in the mainstream of the society. So the reason why I joined the Women's Shatter is because I want to make a difference. I want women to understand that it's okay for a woman to dream. It's okay for a woman to be different. It's okay for a woman to aspire. It's okay for a woman to follow the dream that she has without being interfered with, without having that second thought about whether she's going to be able to please the society or to please the family because we are not going to be able to please everyone. But the thing that you can please is yourself. And I was talking to Sandra yesterday. Uh, I, I got to remember that the best thing to do or the best perspective to get through this is through personal development. I personal development in my country, like courses on personal development in, in a way that people be coached so that we can have that peace to live with ourselves, so that we can understand ourselves, we can introspect, we can know our inspiration, we can know a lot because a lot of time, the reason why we just or we are judging other women who are going out there to make a difference in the society is because we ourselves are not happy. And the other person, is only a mirror you know we are looking through that person or we are looking towards that person as our mirror and if you're not happy yourself chances are if you look at another 
they're going to see a lot of negatives in that person. And even when that person needs to lean on you or needs your support, you won't be able to give that person a support. Therefore, I feel that the best way to go about it is personal development, like I said. Thank you. I believe I didn't take a lot of your time. Yeah. Um, Joan. Joan's on the phone with us now. Joan, you've just been um, hearing the end of Hannah's compelling argument why personal development and empowerment of the girl child and, um, and ensuring that women don't grow up bitter but grow up better. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Botswana, it's not beautiful. <laughs> um, and so uh, <laughs> you'll, I, you'll have a moment mm -hmm. to share in a moment, Jen, about what you're doing to, uh, to address that through the program that you're working on. But Hannah, that's stunning. So let me share with you. So you can imagine a conversation that I had yesterday with Hannah. I was just caught on fire. And um, later in the morning, I had a conversation with the organizers that I'm on a committee for at the Parliament of the World's Religions. I shared with Hannah the, the magnitude of this. It's a global conference, or maybe I didn't. It's a global conference of um, about 12,000 people convene, Hannah. It'll be in Toronto the end of this year in November. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I am part of the Women's Task Force. And a subtrack of that is girls. It just so happens that there's a Gen X task force designed for young people. And I am also a subcommittee of that for girls. So I'm pretty much weaving those two sectors together, those two verticals together, and it's girl. So girls are gonna have a really profound presence there. Um, and so one of the things that I proposed yesterday, it came out of a, it was birthed, Hannah's, Hannah planted the seed for me, as you could see how fruitful her message is. She planted the seed for me, and then on my call, um, it kind of was birthed. <laughs> so imagine a conference center and the big halls. Um, in a convention center um, and uh, lined with uh, six foot video screens. And on those screens are revolving clips of messages from people like Hannah and girls and young women all over the world sharing little one minute, you know, power infused messages, hard hitting messages about girls need to be heard heard as well as seen girls need to um be able to aspire to their dreams girls need to know how to, girls need to be allowed to dream um whatever that message is from wherever it's coming from all over the world in whatever language you speak in your world on screen so whatever workshop you could be going into whether it's on sustainable development whether it's on the environment, whether it's on the World Bank, whatever it's on religious understanding, whatever it's on ending homelessness, you're going to walk by these screens and be, you, you can't unhear these girls asking you to hear everything through the filter of how it's going to impact girls. And it's just going to be one message after the other as you're walking by, but it's going to be revolving 24 seven on those screens. So the, they like that idea. They want to help. Um, they're going to seek some funding for that. Um, and um, and so that was all inspired by Hannah, because I'm like, there's this young woman. I would love to get her on the stage. And there are the, all these women I have conversations with all day long. I would love their voices to be heard, but getting them there is not always easy. And they suggested, well, we can always video them in into the room. And I'm like, well, no, let's video them in into everything. Everything. In other words, every main throwaway. So that's all I'm going to say about that for now. Any feedback on that? Fantastic idea. I think that'll be really powerful and impactful. Great. Thank you. All from girls to young women. Yeah. Maybe boys. Yeah, weaving in. I was just going to say that, you know, yeah. it'd be lovely to have some little boys in there too. Yeah. We, we can't leave them behind. 
Yeah, we spoke about that yesterday too, Hannah and I. So, um, Hannah, you mentioned an organization called it Translates into Stand Up Women. Have you, is that a group that, you know, you think might be a partner for us that we can connect with and then that would support you? Because one of the things Hannah and I talked about was maybe, you know, starting small in her village. And can you imagine little girls hearing her speak? <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, is I'd like to know more about Stand Up Women, and maybe what we can do mm -hmm. is forge an alliance with them that they can support you locally um, with what okay. you're doing. Do you have a connection to them? No, not really. I don't have a connection to them. I just know about them. I think the government affiliated is a government affiliated organization. It's not an NGO. So, but I don't have any other connection with them, but I think they can help because they are government based. Can you do, uh, you know, I, Magdalena Woolery, who, um, <clears throat> who is, um, an, she founded Compassion at Botswana, but she moved. And it was, you know, it never really, okay filtered down. Um, and I reached out to her to ask her for some help for you yesterday. I haven't heard back. I mean, she asked me your name and then we, but I, okay. but because of the time difference, um, she, she's no longer in Botswana, by the way, I shared, but, um, if, can you email me the name of that organization, um, that trans okay, yes, please. and let me see if I can find something and if we can make an elite okay. program and ask her also, because if we can, you know, shore up all the organizations working to that, you know, but I also suggested to, to Hannah that she, you know, invite some mothers perhaps together to say, or, and the girls and try to convene a small group of girls. And here's another thing, you know, the ambassador application that you filled out, we can create an ambassador application for young girls, which I would like to do. And you can, you can, oh, 1 billion rising. Yes. Um, do, can, can, do you know if there's a Botswana connection there, Joan? I don't. Okay, let's check that out. That's why I was, I was going to ask Hannah and I thought I'll just type it out. <laughs> There's nothing sacred here. <laughs> Everything you type is private. Um, oh, yeah. sorry about that. No, it's okay. So, um, so okay. perhaps you can develop your own little ambassador girls program there, and they can answer to you, and you can convene them and have your own little ambassador network of girls, and you're empowering them. You're giving them a sense of power, and they're responsible for. So along with becoming an ambassador, they have to do a little training, which would be telling them all these things about themselves and how powerful they are. Um, that was another idea we had. So this is all still baking and ruminating. We're gonna see about bringing you some programs. This is like more of a high level conversation now about that. Um, yeah, and yeah, I think perhaps, um, I think perhaps this is a really important you can really grow something important there through the charter um, and engaging them to be ambassadors. Joan just recommended you can create a kind of a leadership, you know, process for them so they can grow into, they can aspire to be, um, you know, and maybe um, play with the compassion games. We can do all kinds of fun things with these girls that, and, and young boys, but, but and we talked about that too. Yeah, Joan? Well, the other thing that I'm seeing too is um, as we move, you know, towards 2020 and beyond that um, this is our future. And so as they create a leadership um, role and feel that within themselves, they're going to be the ones more likely to run for political office and, and have that kind of support in doing that as well. So absolutely that's right and we are about empowering girls to be politically literate so that that you might partner up with someone that could support you in that too or join you in that and you can bring together all of these forces to bring up these girls and you you know the the most successful initiatives start with a small group of thoughtful citizens so that's that uh, and what you can do and 
you can have. I have a question. Yeah. So, uh, are you um, hoping to have like clips from girls in different places around the world um, making these statements, or um, it, are you kind of focused on Botswana or? Uh, no, it's my, we're talking. Yeah, and I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to confuse the two th th threads of thought. So one is um, a video with um, a collaborate, a, a, com um, a, a con uh, what am I trying to? A, a compilation. <laughs> There's yes. a scene there. A collection of young women and boys making their statements. That's one thing. Then I went back, and we were back to Botswana. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yes. Wow. You can follow me. Wow. <laughs> well, I just nice. thought that I would mention that um, I'm going to be in Jordan in April, visiting visiting the refugee support organization that I I work with there, and um, I'm sure if you wanted to, we could probably get some you know, do some stuff with some of their refugee kids. They have a teen group and a children's group. And, um, and I think certainly including refugee kids, I mean, you know, <laughs> they called them the lost generation because of just what they're experiencing and, and the, the longevity of their uh, trauma during childhood. And, um, and certainly education is a big, you know, and a big issue trying to make sure refugee kids are, are getting educated and, so um, anyway, if, you know, as things kind of firm up, if, if you want me to approach them about doing that, I, I'm, I would think that, that would be something they'd be interested in. Phenomenal. Exactly. Thank you. By all means, it's a matter. Yeah. So I'm, um, we're working out the details, how we're going to interview them. If it's, we, if they, we want it to look very homegrown and it's done on a cell phone and you video record and then you come home and you download it or we arrange a Zoom call because these take some really good video. Um, yeah. so we're working all of those technical details out, but when are you going to um, Jordan? I'll, I'll be there in uh, kind of mid, well, early April. Okay, by then we'll know. April. So yeah, there's, there's plenty of time, but I just wanted to, you know, throw that out as a possibility. Yeah, that's amazing. So exactly. And, and um, even if I wasn't there, we could, you know, I mean, if depending on how, what uh, we're going to, what process we're going to use, they might be able to be included. But anyway, uh, just keep me posted. Exactly. That's brilliant. And then, um, and because maybe if they're in a camp, they may not have access to the technology. So you may have to pull out your cell phone sort of a thing. So I don't know what the conditions are where you're going to be. But yeah, this, this is a center that's in, that I, the organization, uh, collateral repair project that I work with, it's in um, Amman and it's not only about 20% actually of refugees in Jordan live in camps. People kind of have the misconception that they're all in camps and I probably won't even be able to visit a camp, uh, although I have in the past, but, um, but so yeah, the technology would not be a problem because they have the facilities there at their community center. So whatever works out, I'm, I'm, I'm sure we can work with them. So one way or the other. Beautiful, beautiful. And um, Brenda is going to be in India, as Joan reminded me, and that might be an option. And then, of course, we have Namrata, who um, I'm sure will be able to join us. Um, so, not, you know, we do have access in Pakistan. Um, um, you know, we, we are all over the world. So we also have networks, but I don't. So, yes. Yeah, so we're thinking along the right line. So at, at a certain point, when we get all of our technical you know, we've ironed out and how we're going to do this. Of course, I want Hannah on that, um, on that as well. I would love to get her to, uh, to Toronto, um, by all means. Um, and that was what prompted the whole video idea, was me saying, I want to get Hannah there. I don't know how we can do that. So, um, but, um, but anyway, anyway, so let's move on because this is some really exciting stuff here. And Mary, and speaking of exciting stuff, hi, Mary. Hi, Betsy. Sorry, Mary Betsy. Hi, Betsy. Oh, you muted yourself. I think you're on your phone. Oh, muted. Okay. All right. I'm just going to guess that means she can't get on. Drats. Okay. Well, Betsy's in Virginia. So West Virginia. Yeah. She's on the East Coast of the United States. Um, and so you can't, I don't know if you can hear us, but say hello to Hannah from Botswana. Um, okay, so let's move on. So, uh, no mic. 
but she can hear us. Okay, cool. Um, okay, let's move on. So we're kind of, we're, we're certainly um, out of, no, we're right on time. So, um, okay, Namadi isn't here to update us on what's happening in India, but hopefully she will be able to join us soon. Um, and um, I've already pretty much shared with you the parliament, um, um, you know, initiative. There is an, I'm also trying to develop a, a girl's assembly. So a runway of, of um, speakers on the stage giving these messages as well. Um, and we are working um, to get Malala, we're working to get um, um, Emma Watson. Um, I have a number of you guys, um, this is like I, I think Joan and Brenda and Despina um, plan to be on the stage. Uh, if we can do this, I imagine we will. Um, and um, also, you know, the First Lady of Canada, we're hoping the, pres the, the First Lady will be there. Um, so we're, I'm working out those details to getting them invited right now. So right now I don't have a whole lot to report except for holding that vision. And that the, we are also proposing um, an SDG 18 workshop um, that is I'm going to show you my screen if you haven't already seen this because you've been on our reaction to response calls. Um, but this is something that Elise has been really super about um, about um, promoting this through her calls, reminding us that in order to do, and then Hannah actually said it herself. In order, these are the sustainable development goals, and in order to accomplish any of these goals, um, we really it really needs to come from self. Um, self-awareness and personal agency um, and speaking of personal development because we're we're wanting to develop we're wanting to shift the culture not the laws like she's the very first thing she said is there's the, there's a difference between laws and um, what's culturally acceptable so how do we shift what's culturally acceptable then through the belief system through the through our heart and through when we reach our heart and when we come at it from a personal place and our personal responsibility to accomplishing these goals. Um, and by the way, you can find any issue um, on the planet threaded through any one of these goals. I have uh, some really exciting news to share. I'm gonna wait till next week about um, an investment group that has uh, looped me in, um, working particularly on human trafficking and networking me with all of these amazing organizations that are doing human trafficking Yet where what I can bring to that committee, to that group, is a network of women helping to not just address human trafficking, but all of those things that affect our culture that make human trafficking even possible. So um, any rate, I just, I'm going to just drop that little hint on you or that little teaser and then share more because that just came over this morning. So I'm going to close my screen now. and. Um, and Hannah, I don't know if you've seen that. It's sdg18.com. Um, sustainable Development Goal is what SDG stands for. Um, oh, Brenda is joining us. And if you can't read your screen, and I imagine this is to everybody, I'm going to share it because um, she had a client son pass. So she's um, getting ready to meet the, for a healing rather than participating today. So, boy, Brenda, thank you so much for being here. Um, and um, definitely thank you for being here and, and as you're preparing to do this kind of heart-centered, difficult, but courageous work. Thank you. Um, okay. So, yeah, Malala, and I'm going down the list of your comments here. I don't want them to get missed. Um, what about Rian? Rian Eisler is definitely a great, great, great idea. Bam. Um, yeah. Definitely, yeah, Rihanna. I think Rihanna, she meant the singer. <laughs> oh, Rihanna! Rihanna! Rihanna. I'm thinking Rihanna Eisler. No, but, Rihanna. But, but her too. <laughs> I must have an eyelash in my eye. Rihanna, of course, and you even spelt it right. Rihanna, thank you. Um, I'm going to add her to the list. Yeah. What's excellent with um, Rihanna Eisler is that she, oh. she has such a deep understanding of the background of how things came to be the way they are. 
Oh, yes. Uh, yes, exactly. She has the history and she can put her finger on the pulse of exactly that time in history. Yeah. When and to all people. Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah, to help Absolutely. people understand that because yeah. it goes so deep that I don't think people realize, you know, uh, we've, we've all been taught the history from, um, you know, basically from Jesus on you know so anything um bc we don't really know that much about and and i think that's where she's an incredible knowledge base oh yes thank you i think that's amazing. phenomenal rihanna yeah. that's phenomenal she's amazing um, yeah also yeah also um one of the people up here now talking about some of our musicians india re um has a beautiful you know presentation and talk about how you know it's very difficult in the music industry um to speak her truth that's a great and, yeah that's a great yeah. one Brenda. she might you know be someone who would just maybe do a video talk or something maybe not attend but um yeah she's got a beautiful presence yes 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 and a great message in her, all of her music. But I'll continue. <laughs> there are like 30 foot yes. in the conference hall that not the conference hall in the in the uh, pre, in the hall where the presentations are, the assemblies are because they can fit up to 10,000 people or 12,000 people. So they have these massive screens. So Jimmy Carter and Oprah Winfrey and, um, you know, the Dalai Lama, if he couldn't be there because he hasn't missed the parliament except for the um, Salt Lake Parliament. So, you know, those sort of people are brought on. So it's very okay. It's very, except, you know, usual to do that. Um, okay, great. All right, this is really exciting. So um, we're going to move on because I want to be respectful of your time. Yes. <coughs> you and Sandy? Yeah, sure. Hi. Hi. I just thought I'd let you know while I'm in India, I'll be spe spending time with Sandra, who you may know who works in the film industry and so you know I'll, I'll talk with her about some of this so that you know everything isn't on you okay no thank you see if she has any connections she does have connections actually i was actually in her office talking to her she she developed she's speaking of sandra buffington the, the castro buffington and sandra um started and just stopped <laughs> the um uca yeah. center for media for social impact or I'm, I'm mixing the words up a little bit but her at, at the university of california los angeles ucla and um right and so she's really connected and she definitely and i would just because media for social impact is so important um um yeah we um i yes i i know sandra we actually we got this really weird award together that's how i met her we were invited to get this award and we it was kind of nebulous we didn't know what we were showing up for and and we still don't know what the award was but i can tell you one thing <laughs> we all got a crown and i keep it on my desk to remind me i'm a queen <laughs> so, but anyway, that's how i met sandra we we're both all looking yeah. at each other going I don't get what this award is. We didn't get any piece of paper. We didn't get anything else. <laughs> yeah. But you have a crown. You got a knowledge of your queenship. <laughs> you got a crown. That's even better. Oh, no, it, was really, it was really weird. It was, it was not. It was a lovely luncheon. <laughs> but anyway, you'll have to tell Sandy about that. See what you said. I will. I will. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway. Um, all right, let's move on because we have so much to do and we've got to keep these high level because you guys are so amazing. Oh, I just want to point out, Rianne Eisler actually gave us an endorse, gave me an endorsement for the SCG 18 organization. It's right there on our website. So I have really good access to Rianne. I, you know, I have her direct phone number. So I'm going to, I, I'm going to call her and try to get her to the parliament for sure. Okay, enough of that. Now we can include, close that chapter and let's move on. Um, so Joan, you want to talk about V2020? I know you, I didn't tell you you would be prepared to, but whatever you want us to know at this point. Well, um, well, I was excited to hear that you've aligned with um, 
some people about the trafficking. So I really want to talk with you about that because that, that just seems a real forefront thing that um, really deserves to um, really stay in the forefront. So um, our first call will be um, February 21st. And I'm excited about that. We still don't have someone from One Billion Rising, so um, you know I need to talk with you about that. But um, we really want to focus on um, how we can empower women and girls and also boys in moving forward. And as we move into 2020, that we all develop. Um, a clearer vision of what um, what we see of the world that we want to live in, and and really empower ourselves by moving towards that instead of um, I think we've we've really seen the process of um, other powers coming in and telling us we're going this way even though we know that's not right, you know. And just clear example, Standing Rock. You know, we all knew, and sure enough, they've already had an oil spill. So, you know, how do we empower ourselves instead of staying unempowered in, you know, what do we do? And I think that's, that happens through the masses. So um, what our vision is, is that we're going to be interviewing people. Um, it'll probably be every possibly six to eight weeks. We still don't have that um, totally down. but. Um, it's it's still in an organic process, but we're going to be interviewing people. Um, I'm being really called to do them kind of as a panel. So we have um, two or three different people um, coming together and, and having conversation. And then we open up with the um, after party where people can talk as well. So we're really excited about that. And um, I'd love to hear uh, Hannah's more as well, because we really, we want to keep um, the group that we have to build the momentum and to stay connected globally, as well as, you know, addressing um, the microcosm as well as macrocosm, so. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Um, uh, Betsy added a number of organizations here with her, and um, also we've got a couple that are, you know, um, that are in terms of human trafficking in particular, um, she mentioned here that males are trafficked too, of course, yes. so the young ones. So for sure, um, there's some opportunity here, and that's really beautiful. You know, it only goes to illustrate the, um, the diversity of where we're all entering this place of women's empowerment, um, you know, from where Hannah is to what privileges we have here. And when you can speak about the root of it all and that cultural impact, um, and like you, you just said it, I don't remember exactly how you articulated it, but you know, you're, you're, you're bringing, you're, you're providing an opportunity for no matter where we're coming at it at. Yes. We're all, it, is, it is applicable. Which is part of why I think the 18th goal is so important too. And so, um, you know, I really want to weave that into every single one. So people are really kind of um, ignited with where they're at. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, it, every time I see a Super Bowl commercial, uh, you know, and, you know, because Super Bowl, as Betsy just mentioned, is, and the Olympic events and those major events, um, mm -hmm. are where human trafficking is so. I know. I've been writing every time I see anything Super Bowl on Facebook, I make a comment because they're doing some kind of gospel thing. And um, I, I just, you know, put, I keep planting the seed about um, taking a knee that that's the largest day for sex trafficking, which I just think is such a, um, I, I love, the Native Americans say that there's healthy shame. And I think that that's a healthy shame for people to be aware of, that all those men are coming together and they need to be aware that that's the largest day for sex trafficking. And everyone should be taking a knee for that one. I've never heard that healthy shame. Yeah. yeah, isn't that beautiful? Because it helps you get back on the right path. It helps you write your path through integrity, which I think is part of the 18th. <laughs> <laughs> I 
that you right? You know, because when when um, sometimes shame can keep us from being accountable, we don't know how to deal with um, the the shame that overcomes us, and so we stay in denial. There was a clip um, this morning going around on um, the the uh, coach from the Olympic team, you know, right before his sentencing, and one of the fathers. Um, got uh, handcuffed because he lunged towards him, you know, to, um, to beat him. And, and I think that it, it affects so many people. And as a male and as the father, that creates so much um, unresolved rage and helplessness because that was his child. And you trust somebody that betrays you at that deep level and you don't know how to handle it you know, it's just too overpowering, so. So, yeah, it, it is overpowering. Ter Therese shared with us, and I don't know if you want to chime in here, Therese, but, and I don't know what the CNN Freedom Project is, but it's daunting almost how many incredible organizations are out there. But go ahead, Therese, did you want to say something? Um, yeah, it's, well, a couple of things. Uh, the CNN Freedom Project is, they started it a number of years ago, but it's focused on trafficking and it was to raise awareness, you know, kind of back before, I mean, I think it's done a lot to raise awareness of the issue because it was back before trafficking was really sort of okay to talk about, especially sex trafficking. And absolutely, um, you know, it's, there's a lot of labor trafficking as well as well as sex trafficking. Obviously, sex trafficking is labor trafficking because it, it's these women are working. Um, and, but <clears throat> excuse me, it's a really complicated issue. And the CNN has done multiple programs on various aspects of trafficking. And so our Falco, the Federation of American Women's Clubs overseas, we did a symposium not last October but the October before in the Hague. And um, with a lot of some of the major organizations that address trafficking, particularly in the Netherlands, and although they, although uh, prostitution is legal in the Netherlands, what they found is that um, they were hoping that that would cut down on trafficking. But it's what's happened is that if there are a lot of reasons which I won't go into, it's actually a lot of it's actually gone underground. But uh, at any rate. Um, we have a connection with the CNN Freedom Project, and I actually just uh, got uh, some information that they've got something coming up where they're trying to, to do a, a focus on high schools and universities that are addressing trafficking issues. So if anybody knows of one, I can, um, I can let you know about that information. I can send the information. I'll just send it to Sandy. Yeah. But um, at any rate, if any of those things can be helpful, um, I, you know, I'm happy to share them. And I was starting to say, actually, actually, it's a misconception that the Super Bowl is the largest um, trafficking, whatever, a time for trafficking. It is one of the largest, but, but, and I think the reason why they, uh, in the stuff that I've learned, they make a distinction is that then people think, oh, it's kind of once a year, but it's actually anytime there's a major event where there's a lot of men. So like we have the offshore technology conference in, in Houston, which is for oil industry. It's one of the biggest times, maybe the biggest time in Houston when there's trafficking. Um, so uh, it, it's the Super Bowl is certainly one of them, but it's it. There's also, I mean that and that uh, kind of goes around. But for in my, from the knowledge that I have, it's 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 only one of them. But um, it's definitely a super super important uh, question. And so somebody was asking if I had a connection with the CNN Freedom Project. Is that Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I don't personally, but I think through the people that I know with my organization, I could, I could get you connected. Okay. Because um, that sounds like an organization that would be perfect for me to interview at some point this year. Yeah. If you look on their website, um, actually, if you just put in CNN Freedom Project, they have on their website multiple uh, short, you know, well, short and long documentary pieces that they've done on various aspects of trafficking around the world. Um, so I'll kind of give you a flavor for what they've done. And let me see if I can get, you know, get a contact for you. What the, the person who, one of the original producers actually spoke at the symposium with us. So I'm sure that our 
you know, the people who put it together would have a, you know, be, probably be able to connect me. Beautiful. Wow. Thank you. Thank so you. if you want to send that to me, I can send it out or you yeah. can copy Joan and, um, um, and um, I, I just want to share a little bit more about that good news I got this morning that I, I'm going to still reserve more information to share with you. But um, this is through an organization called the ICV and ICV is an impact giving group. Um, they convene um, high wealth individuals, um, investors, and people who are millionaires that want to um, make sure their monies go to social impact. And um, ICV ensures that. They are a partner with us on the Auschwitz project you, some of you may have heard me talk about. Um, and, um, and so that's how I got looped into this um, convening of because I, I, I reach out to him because he's also they're really active in SDG so I said can you help me like get some um, so, some support around SDG 18 or give me some advice or whatever because this particular individual is also on the uh, sustain the UN sustainable development committee he's on the board of directors actually so I thought okay well let me just see what he says about this but I shared with him a video to tell him about the SDGs and in that video was somebody talking about human trafficking. So he, he thought, oh, human trafficking, bam, and he put me into this group. And wow, what a gift that was because, um, because the, it's a collection of, P and, and the ICV is committed to funding like a collective to, to pull our, our ideas together to create something to make a thunderclap, you know, of impact um, with, because now we have the resources. So I'm still finding my way about what that looks like, but things like this is where we're unique is that we're an entire network. I'm looking at all the, everybody else is like, they're one individual organization. We are an entire network of a whole nother grouping of organizations. So um, this is really something that's birthing on its own. I can tell, I can feel the, the belly growing over there. I don't know what's happening, but you know, when you know something is up in the work, something is taking shape. Um, and this is a conversation that we'll probably continue to have because this is one of, um, this is something we cannot ignore as women, no matter where we are in the world, women and men, of course, but we are the women and girls sector. Um, Teresa's also added, um, Zonta. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you can all, you all are on your computer right now. I'm going to send out um, the notes. How's that? Because this is so great. Yeah, and I want to be thoughtful of yeah, your you to share with you. I just wanted to send, yeah. I just wanted to send it to you while I was thinking of it because it'll go right out of my head. So, but yeah, it just, it's really mostly for you. So. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I'm going to save this chat um, right now so I don't forget myself. I keep, I save it a few times during the call. Um, okay. So, Wow what a fruitful conversation and an important one to have. And thank you for that insight and that great information. Um, the last thing I want to share, and hey, we got three minutes to go, is, um, is Denim Day. April 5th is Denim Day. I'm going to send you a PDF of what that is. We have, an, we have um, April 5th is also um, Golden Rule Day. So, interesting. Also what? The Golden Rule Day. Oh, yeah, and the U and I and the U. Uh, the Charter is promoting Golden Rule Day. Um, you know, the the Charter for Compassion is so much a part of the Golden Rule, and the Golden Rule is mentioned, you know, throughout so much of everything we do because it's really taking the Golden Rule to the next level or the Platinum Rule to the next level. Um, but Denim Day is um, basically real quick, just a refresher in, um, I don't know, it was about 15 or 20 years ago, maybe longer, um, the Supreme Court in Italy ruled or overturned a ruling um, of rape because he, the, the judge um, felt that the woman was wearing tight jeans. And therefore, because they were so tight, she had to help her, um, her, uh, her, um, her rapist remove them. And and therefore, um, he was probably, well, it's not raped, it was consent. And so April 5th, everyone is supposed to wear blue jeans and make a statement. So, um, yeah, 
So that's so we want to we're going to do some sort of a little campaign launching that and, and bringing awareness to that. Um, but I just wanted to put that on your radar because April 5th is coming and maybe we can somehow work that into a, a V20 campaign too. Um, right. And thank you. Uh, the golden rule is in every um, culture and religion. And there's a golden rule poster. Um, you could just Google golden rule poster and it's this round, beautiful image of the golden rule with all, with um, the main, the probably the, the world's main religions um, with their golden rule. And it's just mixing the words up a little bit. Yeah. Um, so um, I'll, let me send that to you. It's kind of cool. Golden rule poster. Um, okay. So is there anything else? It's nine o'clock right on the nose. Um, I just want to say thank you so much, everyone. Much thank you for focusing on trafficking. On, thank you for focusing on helping girls achieve their dreams. Thank you. And as Hannah reminds us, girls, empowering girls to dream. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I think girls dream regardless. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. To, it, yes. Thank you. Hannah, um, I, we want to thank you and welcome you. I hope you feel supported and heard. Um, although we can't see you now. Um, that was one of the things she said to me yesterday. I want to make sure that girls and w women and girls are not just seen, but also heard. So I hope you feel heard and supported here. And with that, I want to thank you all. It's a tremendous honor for me. So um, if you said you were going to send me something, send it to me. And if I said I was going to send something to you, I'm going to send it to you. <laughs> and, <laughs> I'm just going to rely on my notes in my chat window here to remind me. And I've also recorded this call. So, um, and also the, um, yeah, okay, good. I'm reading notes, make sure I'm in. Yes, Mayor, uh, Betsy, we've missed you too. And we can't wait to hear and see your face when that is a possibility. All right, everybody, have a great day. Good Bye, evening, Hannah. Bye, Hannah. Bye. Bye, everybody.